All right, YouTubes. Ronald Jenkins there, huh? Love that guy. He's finally put some new posts up after three years. If you've never heard of Jenkins, look him up on YouTube. He makes beats, but they're awesome. Uh, anyways, what are we going to do on this Tuesday, April 19th? Uh, I think the brand new Sturgill Simpson is most certainly in order. Uh, I reviewed Meta Modern Sounds, and I've had a lot of comments and a lot of views on that one. And this album... Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, so I can't lie. Been listening to it a lot lately already. Um, if you haven't already heard the singles uh, Brace for Life and the Nirvana cover in Bloom, those both kick ass. Uh, and if you don't know who Sturgill is, well, he's sort of country. Uh, this album's blending or blurring those lines with everything from like soul, rhythm and blues and jazz to alternative rock. And I like that because... Why bother? You know, why bother fitting into a mold when you're somebody as talented uh, and as smart as Sturgill Simpson? So, he has said in multiple interviews that this may be his last record. I don't know, and I sure hope it isn't, but what I do know is that it sounds like a dedicated sort of story to his child, uh, if you will. Uh, sort of like a piece by piece. And all in this sort of, uh, well, you know... Um, it's broken down into these flags and these stories that if you came to world or the earth, it would sort of tell you how to live your life. And it called a sailor's guide to earth. It's sort of, I guess, a big analogy for what it takes to sort of survive in this world. And, you know, uh, a parent, someone with two daughters, there's a lot that could be said on that nature of how you teach your kids and whatnot. But I think he's not just teaching that. I think he's teaching all of us. And he has some good things to say, and uh, in, a, in a very spirited sense, the music um, is real. And in that way, Sturgill's real. Like, everything he has to say is real, and it connects with me here, it connects with me here, and in turn, it, it you know, it, it's just a full embodiment of what music is supposed to be. So, without um, further talks in the beginning let's let's find the link below listen to some if not all of sturgill's a sailor's guide to earth come back join me in a sit-down conversation we're going to talk about it all right so here we go pretty happy with this uh i have to say um so far 2016 uh you know this is video well album review number 98 and i have only done so many new records because there isn't that much new music coming out that I'm either that interested in or really that I think is worth my time, um, you know, as opposed to even older music. So this album, I'm going to give it the tip of the hat to say it's my favorite release of 2016 so far, and it'll most likely make my top 10. Um, it has something for everyone. Um, regardless of your uh, age or your gender or your race or, or any of those things, whatever kind of music you like in your life up to now, you can find something in here. Uh, and, and that's to be said, if you have taste, I guess, any sense of depth, uh, personally speaking, then this is for you. Um, and I think it's pretty cool that Yesterday, I did the Wonka release, uh, or re-release, the 45th anniversary, and I sort of was reminded of O'Shaughnessy's uh, poem that we are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. And um, that sort of embodiment here is something that I really think is uh, in the spirit of a talented musician like Sturgill. And it just so happens that right at the bottom of the insert here is a quote from Ode, and it says, We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams, wandering by lone sea breakers and sitting by desolate streams, world losers and world forsakers on whom the pale moon gleams, yet we are the movers and shakers of the world forever, it seems. <laughs> perfect timing, I suppose. Um... Brilliant. Uh, uh, so fitting for this album, so fitting for, um, you know, when it was written uh, over a hundred years ago, and, and, and even more fitting now. Uh, we don a technical era in which uh, the division amongst us is, is 
is so broad yet so small and technology continues to connect us and yet we we, we fight amongst each other in these weird ways so I, I I am honored to be able to live at a time when, when music like this that sort of showcases the broad spectrum of everything, uh, be it lyrically speaking, uh, musically speaking, uh, it's, it's heartfelt, it's honest, no bullshit. Um, and I, I am somebody who takes music very seriously and very to heart, and, and this is pure music in the purest form. And so. I've got the vinyl here, very cool, um, I just like the imagery with the, the compass here, Con continues the theme for the sort of sailor's guide to earth, we've got the, uh, you know, the ship wheel on the back of the cover, um, of course, this sort of almost like tattoo-esque, but it's like a rocky ocean, and it sort of looks like a um, kraken or some kind of uh, octopus at the bottom. Just it really comes together. Um, some with tattoos, and some of the imagery kind of reminds me of some tattoo work. Um, little, just little lighthouse down here sort of tells that, you know, this is the lighthouse, you know, guiding you, guide the way sort of thing. Um, but a lot of symbolism, and, and I like how it's broken into chapters. Um, so let's start with the beginning. We start at Welcome to Earth, Polywog, um, and this is sort of the birth, um, musically speaking, and I think metaphorically for the album. Uh, probably about his son, and, and it even has that sound. It's 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 very spiritual, and although the the vocal has this nice contrast against this delicate music, there are these sudden waves crescendoing through it, and then the intro sort of opens up when you're first hit with the uh, Dap Kings here on the record, and the story sort of unfolds, um, you know, from the beginning, since this it is sort of the guide to earth, if you will, it, it starts at that place. And I think that um, as a parent now, um, you know, Sturgill had his son in June, same as him, he's born in June, uh, two years ago almost. And uh, I think that parenting can be simple and it can be very complex. And this music sort of resonates that, that there is simplicity in the complexity of it all. And, and that's like life. And that's like anything that is sort of, I guess, brilliant in its own way. It can be taken at the surface or it can be taken very deeply. And I think that that's what the most of this is. It's something that on the surface, it's just really good music. And you can take it so that you just listen to it. But underneath, when you scratch away the layers, you sort of find that it becomes more and more complex, more and more deep. And the symbolism and the embodiment of the entire album, structurally speaking, really, really smart, sophisticated, um, and just, you know, it's not just country music that could learn from this record. It's all music. I mean, music is hurting right now. Um, when bands like Churches are the most popular on the radio, um, you know, when we have to still hear the same 10 Red Hot Chili Pepper songs every day, and, and I love the Peppers, but I mean, Let's get past it. When, when a band like Guns N' Roses, who, albeit great, phenomenal band, um, is the talk of music right now because they're deciding to tour again, there's a hurt in the industry. And um, I, I give it to Sturgill to sort of step in, chime in, and make something so real, so honest, so true, that um, you know it, it can only sort of resonate within, within music. And hopefully you know, we continue to see more of this. So, um, you know, it sort of gets me going in the sense that the ebb and flow is very balanced. There's a lot of a genre flowing again. Like I said, the Daft Kings in here of 60s and 70s fame from, uh, you know, they've, they've done the funk thing, the blues thing, the soul thing for a long time. Won their first Grammy a few years back and, and now here they are with Sturgill. And I think that this album um, is probably going to win some sort of award. I don't know what it's going to be or where it'll be, but I like that the Dap Kings are a part of it more. Tip of the hat from Sturgill to them, and just sort of saying, you know what, I'm going to do whatever I want with the music. Um, you know, lyrically, recurrent theme, Polywog, I think that's the nickname he has for his son, I would only guess. Um, we get into the song Between the Lines. Now, this is the only song that I am not with 100%, and that's not because I don't like it, because I do, but it's because it has this sort of, almost like a 80s or 90s movie sound to it, like uh, you'd hear an opening montage, a Harold Ramis movie. Um, and, and it's almost like, lyrically speaking, um, Keep It Between the Lines could be turned into a movie. 
it feels like it was made for a soundtrack, um, but it is the soundtrack. So, so I don't know. I, I'm not 100 on that one, but I enjoy it. Um, Sea Stories, I think, sort of uh, talks about traveling the world and, and how, you know, we're supposed to learn from our experiences and, and more directly, I guess, his time he spent in Japan, but really can be broader than that. Um, I just mentioned that because he lists all of the uh, Asian cities on there. Um, and, and where do we find ourselves after that? Right at the In Bloom cover. Um, killer cover. What a rendition of a, a, a well-known song, but just flipping it on its head. Uh, I've heard numerous Nirvana covers. Um, don't really care for many of them, especially someone who loves Father John Misty. That cover of his floating around the internet last year was just of Heart Shape Box, just not good. Um, seen Muse live a couple of times, and once they did a cover, uh, Nirvana. And, and I know that they got Welcome to the uh, you know, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, so there's a lot of this uh, you know, pressure to, to, to sort of play into that space and, and honor Nirvana some more. But... This is the best Nirvana cover I've ever heard. To date, hands down, that's it. I don't know. Maybe he wrote this version of it to sort of, you know, sort of communicate some of the struggles in his life, burdens of alcoholism, and, and, and maybe taking people for granted when you shouldn't. And, you know, it was a nice way for him to do that. And in so doing, he sort of re-honored the song in a, in a beautiful way. It, it sort of goes from slow to this brilliant horn piece at the end. It becomes very epic and not unlike Nirvana themselves, but a completely different uh, musical style. So, really, just kick ass. Uh, flip the record, you know, you get to side B and we have the opening song, the single, uh, Brace for Impact, which is basically death, or, you know, explanation of life and death, you know, in, in a nutshell, if you will. Uh, we're dying to live, living to die, no matter what you believe. And, and, and that, to me, is perfect. You know, everybody here on, on our planet and, and beyond, if you will, if somebody's tuning in, uh, we, we have our own struggles with life and death. And I think we, we move into these places of our lives where we approach it um, uh, with a fearlessness or, or a scarcity. Uh, and by scarcity, I mean, like, we're, we're clinging to scraps of, of things that people have put out before us. But... Sturgill sort of paints this picture. It's it's bigger than ourselves. It's bigger than anybody. It's it's all of us. It's inside of us. It's around us. And that to me is the closest thing to a, a religious sentiment I'll ever be able to embrace. And I think it's uh, honest and uh, full of full of love. And, and I think that's important to, to say that you can write a song about living and dying and, and put that love in there, you know, while giving us the catchiest hook on the album. Um, and I really like the uh, bass line. It it's sort of carries a song. It starts a song. It goes through it. But I will have to note that on, on the liner notes here, it lists Sturgill for acoustic guitar, um, a Moog synthesizer. Um, but... I watched him perform the song on Colbert, and he's playing an electric guitar, sort of a, uh, he's a, I think he was drop D even, like power chords, um, da, 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 over and over again, which is in the song, but sort of riffing on that. There wasn't the acoustic uh, version. So, I don't know, maybe different versions of every song, maybe a B-sides, maybe some other live outtake performances uh, down the road, an extended uh, press of this with more songs on it. At nine tracks, it is a little short. Um, I would say that this is too good for country music, but it is still rooted in country music. Um, so take note, real artists, uh, take note all of you who allow the labels to to sort of tell you what you're going to do, this is the time. Uh, this is the time to let your visions be heard because we're listening. Uh, us, the fans, are listening. And it's someone like Sturgill who's going to pave the way for the next generation of music. And in doing so, I want to talk about the track All Around You, my favorite. This song is epic. Um, it's, it's insane. Uh, it, it brought a tear to my eye. The, the first time I heard it, uh, and it's uh, emotionally smart, it's sonically charged, it's um, the best usage of horns on this record, in my humble opinion, um, and it, it's sort of rooted in blues, but it tells this, you know, really nice story, and I just want to sort of quote something so you understand, um, 
you can let go of the pain if you choose to because time slips away and skies fall apart, revealing to all a universal heart, glowing, flowing all around you. That, that stings, but it stings so, so well. Um, it, it, it's, it's something that I've been looking for. Like, I couldn't have put those words together myself, but it feels so real to me. Um, like, I would have said it, uh, or I was hoping that somebody would say it for me. So, I don't know. Just, that's my personal favorite song. If you haven't heard that one yet, listen to All Around You. It is brilliant. Um, we go into O oh Sarah, which is a love song, but it's complimentary to the album in its own right in that everybody falls in love at some point. And when you're making a song that's a metaphorical journey through life, uh, the experience thereof, love is definitely a necessary part of it. So it's a much welcome mellow ballad on the album, and it's relatable as well. I mean, here he says, um, Forgive me if sometimes I go a little crazy, but goddamn, sometimes crazy is how I feel. Yes, of course, and if we've all been with somebody we love and care about well enough, we know that they end up getting the worst of us and the best of us, and they're usually, if they love you back, the person to help embrace that and help you through it. So, well put out, well thought out love song um, from his perspective as being a traveling musician, but as somebody... Uh, who obviously has been in a real relationship and making it relatable for everyone. Again, this whole album is insanely relatable to a very broad audience. Um, finishes with this bluegrassy, up-tempo finisher, uh, very upbeat, just sort of, eh, you know, dancey track, if you will. Reminds me of more of his bluesgrassy stuff that uh, he did on his first record, and maybe even more of his band he was in prior to going solo. And seeing him last year, he played a lot of that kind of music live, so I know it's in his wheelhouse to need music like that. That's what he likes to perform when he's on the road. So it's definitely a track that he wanted to take, put on a record, let us hear, and then be able to perform it live and have, you know, that, you know, sort of touch point with the audience. Because I won't lie, when I saw him live, he didn't play a song I knew, and I knew a lot of his work already. I had the first two albums, so I don't know what happened there, but... Uh, Albeit Sturgis Simpson, the madman he is, to play a set of unheard music for a Coachella crowd. Very cool. Very, very cool. So, again, if you like music and you have taste and a sense of depth, I think this is for you. Very, very big props to Sturgis Simpson. You are the man. This record is incredible. Thank you for putting it out. Thank you for gifting it to the world as you have. And, and just keep it up, man. I really hope. It's not the last effort we hear from you because at this rate, you're only getting better. And I know like people like to go out on a high note, but I, I would love for some more music to come out. So thank you much. To you on YouTube, my listeners, I have to say, I hope you find some solace in this record. I hope you let it fill your heart with all the warmth that it has for me. And I hope that you think about the words and you think about the music and apply it to your own life because this is a deep record with a lot to give. Um, as always, thanks for listening. Look for me on YouTube right here all the time. New videos almost every day. Like, comment, subscribe, share, hashtag. 365 album reviews in 2016, if you don't mind. And of course, look for me on Facebook, Daily Vinyl Online, and Instagram at daily underscore vinyl. So, that's it for now. Until the next one, take care, much love.